Hey, it's Austin Solomon with the Solomon Group Coldwell Banker. Thanks for listening into this week's episode of The Real, the Wausau Real Estate Show. Thanks for joining me. Today we're talking about how to select an agent to sell your home. So you're ready to sell your house. You're thinking about downsizing, moving somewhere warmer, maybe even somewhere colder, although I don't hear that often. Maybe your family is growing out of your current house. You need more space or whatever it is. The home that you have was great, but it's time to adjust your needs and find a new place. Now it's time to think about who's going to help you on the selling side. Uh, When it comes to selling a house, there's a few things to think about. Who's going to be great at marketing my home? How can I get the most exposure for my house and get the best offer? Who is good at negotiating and who can help educate me each step of the way um, so I feel comfortable throughout the process? So episode two, here we go. How to select an agent to sell your house. Uh, Today I'm going to break down the areas that differ among agents and companies and how to go about selecting an agent. Um, So in no no order, I have... uh, five criterion or criteria to select your agent. Uh, First thing is you want to select someone that you trust and feel comfortable with. Uh, Selling a home can take anywhere from 30 days to a few years. And so you want to select somebody that uh, is easy to work with, you feel comfortable working with, that you trust and you know who has your best interests in mind. Um, You know, you want to select someone who's honest, reputable, who you feel comfortable with. Uh, also, you want to select someone that works well with others, not only you, but people. someone that works well with the local lenders, agents, title companies, um, and especially other agents. You don't want someone who's difficult to work with because although to you they may be easy to work with uh, if they have uh, if they're difficult to work with with uh, lenders and title companies and other agents, they don't cooperate well. Uh, then that could negatively affect you uh, in the long run. Uh, and obviously you want someone that uh, <clears throat> that you trust. The greater the trust between the parties in the transaction, the easier the process is. Um, that that way you know it's it's two-sided. If the agent knows that you value and trust their opinions throughout, um, they're going to be working hard for you to uh, to make things work. Um, and likewise, obviously, you, you need to be able to rely on your agent's advice and opinions and, and come to conclusions uh, with their guidance. Uh, so number two, marketing plan and exposure. Second criteria to select an agent is what's the marketing plan going to be? How is my house going to be exposed on the website and in the marketplace? Um, so how does the agent market the house? Uh, these are all questions that you can a- ask. How does the agent market the home? Is there a marketing plan? Or are you flying by the seam of your pants to market my house? How does the real estate company assist in the marketing? And by this, I mean that there's really two parts to hiring a a realtor. One is you're hiring the agent, which is the primary factor. But there's also the company that's behind that agent. And uh, they're going to play a factor in the marketing of the property and the experience as well. Uh, Does the agent have a professional photographer that they work with and a professional write-up for the house? Uh, Is the information on my home going to be complete and accurate? Does the agent take the time to document the home and really get to know what they are selling? Um, And then finally, is there a plan and a process in place to market and get the right amount of exposure? I know that when I started in this industry, uh, it was just me and when I got busy you know, in an urgency-filled business, when everything's urgent, uh, the easiest thing to cut is marketing because marketing a home because that's not uh, necessarily urgent, but um, it is very important. So uh, that's a that's an important piece to to consider too. Is 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 there a plan and a process, and is there uh, realistically enough time to execute that? Um, So, okay, number three, you want to hire a local and a reputable company. Uh, You want to choose someone local, someone who works well and knows the agents in the area, uh, who has connections in the area, um, and who can show the house in a timely manner if someone wants to see it. You don't want someone coming, you know, three, four hours across the state 
to show your house because naturally there's going to be some resistance. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be in the township. For example, if you're selling your house in Wausau, you don't have to find a company in Wausau. Maybe it could be Schofield, Weston, surrounding area, etc. I would say within an hour of your home uh, would be best. Um, <clears throat> does the size of the company matter? Uh, it's not a primary factor of choice, but it can be significant. In general, larger companies may have larger marketing budgets and more staff and processes in place to best assist you throughout uh, the process. Number four, this is uh, pretty cr critical, is the knowledge and experience that the agent has. So obviously you want someone that knows what they're doing, who's been through the process and can guide you um, <clears throat> to the best result. There's thousands of situations that can come up throughout a home process. Um, and even today, after going through 550 deals, uh, some of the stuff that comes up is is brand new like it's never came up before but what i've learned and what's really interesting is if you if you've dealt with thousands of problems and you figured out how to resolve those um when the problem comes up the second third fourth you know fifth maybe a hundredth time you know the best way well as an agent that agent's going to know how to deal with it in a favorable way and time efficient uh, manner so that's going to save you a lot of time and stress because they've been through that and they know how to best navigate that that problem when it comes up. And um, every time there's problems that come up. So, all right. Um, the last piece is, the last factor is obviously the, the, the cost, the commission to sell your house. Uh, that is something that you have to consider too. Um, selling your home is a little bit different from other jobs that you hire out. Uh, the difference is that when you sell your house, um, the price that the house sells for is not fixed. And this is one of the things that I, it's hard that I don't think people quite understand is there is most certainly a difference, uh, for what your house is going to sell for to the consumer, whether you list the house on your own or select one agent over the other, over the other, there's, there's no way that the house would sell for the same amount in those three scenarios. Um, so that's what's interesting. So here, it's almost like you're hiring someone to get the best return on the house. And so with that, um, if one agent charges less less commission or, or less, uh, less of a percentage than another, you really have to see uh, what you're getting for or what that's costing you. Um, maybe you save that 1% in commission, but it might cost you quite extensively marketing plan, you know, an extensive marketing plan and a professional feel that might cost you five, six showings on the home, which might cost, uh, might cause only there, there to be one offer on a house versus two, and that could be thousands. So also the experience too, not just monetary wise, but if you pay a little bit more, or if you um, pay pay more for a better experience, that might be something you value as well. Uh, here, I think the key is go for value. Obviously, you don't want to pay a ridiculous price to sell your house, uh, but you want a good value and a good um, experience. Um, so it should be reasonable uh, amount to sell the house. Uh, I would exercise caution around some of the online um, like service areas that you can like limitly or limited service listings and other online brokerages um, that where you're not actually dealing with a person. Just be cautious around that. Um, and then finally, um, oh, actually, no, that's the that's the fifth point. So there you go. Five criteria to on how to select an agent to sell your house. Now, I'm going to go into a couple pieces on how not to select an agent. Uh, first thing, how not to select an agent is the agent who gives you the highest price. So when you, uh, you know, what's normal is when an agent takes on, you know, listing a home, your home, they're going to, the conversation of price is going to come up and they're going to most of the time prepare a market analysis that uh, will show you what other homes have sold for and where you should be price-wise. Um, if you talk to a couple agents and 
they give you different prices, which would be, again, there's some interpretation on, on pricing. Um, but one of the easiest ways or one of the pitfalls that, I, that comes up a lot is the agent who gives the highest price or who um, can, you know, conveys that they can sell it for the most gets the job and gets the listing. Uh, it's problematic, though, because oftentimes if a house isn't priced right, uh, there's a lot of negative sides to that. It sits on the market and then eventually comes down to a price that could potentially be lower than than what uh, what originally it should have been listed at. Um, and so there's a lot of negative sides to that, um, but it's very tempting to go with the agent who gives you the highest price because you believe, well, hey, this person really values what I what I have here. And, but really, you have to go with someone that I, I would not use the um, use price, the, the pricing that the agent gives as a criteria to select an agent, unless it's just a ridiculously low or high. Well, if it's a ridiculously low number, then that might, you know, bring some um, some concerns and questions. So, again, the price that an agent gives would not use that to select which agent you're going to work with. Um, Number two, lowest commission. Again, we, we really did talk about that and how um, there's more that goes into the the cost to, to sell a house than obviously you can you could save a little bit on the commission side, but that might cost you um, in the marketing plan. So you want to obviously go for value. Go for value when it comes to what you're paying. Uh, number three, uh, how not to select an agent. A friend or family member if they don't meet the five areas we discussed, uh, again, if they don't meet the five areas we, we discussed, if they do, then that's perfect. Hey, you know someone, you trust them, uh, they're honest, they have a great marketing plan, good good local company, they're reasonable rate, they're knowledgeable, boom, hire them. Um, but if they don't exercise, you know, these qualities and they're not... Um, you know, you're just hiring because like you're hiring them because you know them, um, then you, you know, you really have to ask yourself, uh, you know, what, what's most important? Are you doing them a favor? Or are you doing what's best for, for you? So again, if they display a lot of these qualities, a good, uh, good listing agent, then, then you can rock and roll. So, um, sweet. That's all I got today for this episode, how to select an agent. Hopefully that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, Feel free to reach out and we will see you at the next episode. 